First, this is uh, this is the first meeting we've ever had in the, since I've been here between school committee and the um, finance committee uh, prior to any kind of budget being out. Or, um, and we um, first, I want to thank you for showing up because I know it's another meeting and. Um, it's not like we all need to have another meeting, but um, with the way things are going, um, meaning costs, um, meaning the budget within the town, um, we, we thought it would be best if we all got together to see if we could, you know, approach this thing like we're all on the same boat, we're all on the same page, we're, we, you know, we're all citizens of this town. We're, we're all taxpayers of this town. And by the mere fact that we're all on committees or boards, I think we all have the best interest of this town um, in the forefront. So, um, so I, I, I guess, in, you know, I hate to be old school here, but I, I, I just think the best way to start this whole thing off is just to maybe introduce ourselves and, and get a sense of who we are, how long we've been here. I'll start. Um, I'm Paul Anteo. I live up on Weber Road uh, with my wife Maureen, who's a uh, teacher in the Deerfield school system. Um, we raised three kids in town. All of them went through this school in Frontier. Um, I'm now retired. And um, I have more work now than I did before. I'm not, I'm not quite sure why, but I do. Um, and um, um, you know, I've been in town for um, a while, for, since '83. So, um, not that that makes me, um, you know, uh, a pilgrim here, but I've um, been here for a while. So, um, so that's me. Um, I'm Bob Fighting Cabot, I live over in Christian Lane, and I have four kids with my wife Carrie, and I think that's all I need to say about myself. <laughs> did your kids go to the school? They did go to Wayne Real Elementary School. Yeah. I'm Tom Maher, I live in West Whaley, Poplar Hill Farm. I have five children, they all went to Whaley School, mm -hmm. all graduate, well they didn't all graduate mm -hmm. from Frontier. Uh, I've been living here since 1979, and I've been on the finance committee on and off for probably 30 years. True enough. So I'm Joe Zawinski. I live on Christian Lane. Uh, I've got five kids. Some have gone private school, some have done public school, some have school choice. So I've seen a little bit of, uh, of, of everything. Uh, I've been on the finance committee. I, I don't really know how long. Uh, Less than 10 years, so I'm kind of a, a newbie in this in that regard, regard, but I've been in town since uh, 1996. So, um, you know, I was asked to be on this board, uh, this committee, and uh, I enjoy every, every bit of it. Um, and, um, you know, I look forward to working with the different groups and trying to make this town, a, you know, and, and schools or everything that goes along with it a better, a better place, a better town. Fred Barron, I live on North Street. I have two grown girls. I moved here four years ago. Uh, so the kids did not go through the Whitley school system. And uh, I've just been on this finance committee for a year now. So, well, <laughs> a newer cover. <laughs> newer. Um, and enjoying and just still want to contribute to the town. I'm Brian Dominant, I'm the town administrator. I don't live in Whaley. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, anything I have to say is not valid. <laughs> <laughs> and your children don't go to school, really. Yeah. Well, one of them does. <laughs> Dan Kennedy, lived down in uh, Chestnut Plain. Uh, three kids all started school here, and then they all went to different schools. I have brought families, Kennedy family been in town since 1900, I think. So, been around, been on the finance committee for a number of years. 
Bob Hell, I live up on Westbrook, two kids, 28 and 24, both went to Waitley Elementary School and Frontier Regional and both graduated from college and been here since, what did I say, 89 and been on the school committee for uh, pretty close to 15 years, maybe 16 years, a little stint there. I let some newer person see if some get some new blood on there and that didn't work out so I came back aboard you know, about four years ago. So I enjoy it. I'm there for the kids. Um, that's what I can tell you. Also, I'm on the chair of front here now. Oh, you really? Yeah. That's good. Right. I'm Maureen Nichols. I just started on the school committee um, this month. I live in <clears throat> West Waitley on Conway Road. I've been in Waitley since probably 2007. I have three kids, all at Waitley Elementary. And uh, I've got uh, a parent another parent should be on the school committee, so here I am. And I'm Katie Edwards, and um, I'm John's wife, so I have a lot of meetings in my house <laughs> already. But there was an opening on the school committee about two years ago, and it was empty, and I just felt strongly that they needed to have a school, a parent represented on the school committee, so I joined. And I uh, have been on now a year and a half. This is my second full year. Um, and I have two kids, one in um, fifth grade and one who's in eighth grade but doesn't go to Frontier. Um, and I, I really feel like we could, Waitley has, is a real opportunity to make a, you know, have a great school. It does have a good grade school. And I think we just need to think about how to continue um, in the future, given some of the challenges that are out there. Exactly. Well, again, uh, this is great. I'm glad everybody uh, is here and um, have a, sort of a rolling discussion. Um, I do want to say that this sort of kicked off during, you know, the last budget season. And what we realized, not what we realized, we just looked at the calendar <coughs> and saw that we basically were presented the budget how many days into, um, I mean, before we had to make a decision? About five weeks. Uh, on numerous departments or less, yeah. So it, <clears throat> vague information. Yeah, and and it's and um, look, Patty does a wonderful job. Like she just, I mean, she's got her fingertips on all the numbers, and she can tell you what everything is. But when she comes here and just gives it to us, we can't do much more than kind of nod our heads and go because it. It does make sense at that point. Um, but trying to get behind the numbers, trying to understand the why behind um, some of the expenses, and you also don't get a view of the historical growth within any of the, of the, ver of the various uh, line items that she's speaking about. So uh, it's very difficult to get a, um, a handle on it. And we want to get a handle on it because we're a little bit of a different finance committee. In the state of Massachusetts, there are some finance committees that when they get the budget or they get the budget, budgetary needs from select board or home at home ever they they check the bank if it's in the bank it's a green green light we on the other hand we um strive to take a look at value you know something's requested of being spent in town we we try to get underneath it we try to understand why some why monies need to be spent in a certain way and um, and we, th we think that um, getting a handle on the value that, ex that, that these expenses bring into town is a very important way of um, determining whether or not we go to the town floor and recommend that that budget 
be approved or not approved. We don't say yay or nay to anything. All, our, our role is to, and it's a statutory role, is to put the town bu budget together, <laughs> present that budget to the town, and recommend to the town the monies that should or should not be spent. So that's what we do. Um, we don't have a handbook in town. There is a state handbook, and we, we've all seen it. Um, likewise, I, I try to get a little sense of what does a school committee do? I've never been on a school committee. I've known you forever, and I've known some other people for a long time, and we've gone to a lot of meetings together, but to be quite honest, what the exact role of a school committee person is, uh, I'd have trouble answering that. Um, I took a look on the Mass uh, Department <coughs> of Education site, and uh, wait, it's one of the town frontiers, another town that does not have their own handbook. Many time, towns have their own handbook, so obviously that defaults to what the state says a school committee should do. Just like for us, we default to what a state says we should do. So. Could you guys give us sort of a thumbnail sketch as to what you think your chief responsibilities are and, and, and all of that? Well, I've been here, I've been here longer, so I guess, I guess I'll speak a little bit. It's, I find that everybody thinks that some places rubber stamp things and just move things along. Um, I've learned a little bit the last few years listening to Don Skrowski, who was on the school committee for a few years, and it was really good, and I was trying to listen to all the little things that he used to, his little jabs or his little, you know, wanted to find out why. Mm -hmm. And, you um, know, it was always in the back of my mind, geez, that's a, that's a good question, Don, that he would ask. I think sometimes, exactly what you said with Patty, Patty's the one that puts things together. It's really tough when you get our, our, monthly, our monthly thing with all the line items and there's negatives already at the beginning of the year. And we ask why, and typically, if it's personnel, it's a shifting from one line item to another line item. And that usually doesn't happen until after school starts and that person's, instead of working 0.6 somewhere, it's working 0.1 there and things get shipped a little bit. So we don't know exactly sometimes where all the money goes either because Patty has it, because mm -hmm. Darius at Frontier mm -hmm. or Pete at, at Waitley, sometimes they'll, they'll change a one-on-one -on -one aid or an aid instead of working half the time here, we work in half, so it comes out at different lines. So it, it drives us crazy, but what Patty does now, especially at Frontier, is that if there's a, a minus, <clears throat> we have a sheet that she hands out, you know, a, a continuous sheet that shows us, okay, line item number 49, this is why it is. Uh, Long-term sub or something, why it went out of balance or something like that. Mm -hmm. So she has that, so every, every month when we get that, we can see that. I, you know, I, I'm there for the kids. Um, I look. I look at the budgets ahead of time. We always try to say, "Geez, it, it." I think the biggest drive is not our typical everyday thing. When we, you and I went to school, you know, it's it's you know the five hundred ones or or the IEPs and stuff. We have more and more of that in our school system, and all it takes is one, like we had a few years ago for a period of time. All it takes is one to really throw the budget off. And we're talking six digits sometimes. And that really hurts us a lot when we have a, a student that throws it off that much. Um, and nowadays, there's, there could be up to four or five kids per, per classroom that need extra. So when it comes to aids, you know, the one-on-one -on -one aids or an, an extra aid that costs you know, ten or fifteen, twenty thousand dollars for a classroom, 
and you say, why, why, we only have a classroom of 18, but half the class needs extra help, and that's, that's, that's where these extra aids are coming from. If we didn't have it, you know, I went into a classroom late in the year last year, I won't say what class it was, but it was, it was, I gave the teachers kudos, the, the aides, they had their hands full with four or five individuals in one classroom, and I sat there for a half a day, and it was really, it was really tough watching what was going on, and you know, they have, they have a therapy dog now in the school. Here? In the district, I think. Well, no, it basically, it's just, um, just that. I think one of the teachers is going through a training program for it, and she's brought the, she's been bringing the dog in. I don't know. Well, last year the dog was there. It happened the day I was happened to be there with the dog is there. But supposing you know this dog, which I met, is there every day now mm -hmm. during the school day, during the school week, and it really helps these kids. Yeah. I mean, I saw it the day I was in there. It really helps these kids staying calm. You know, getting their work done. You know, it comes down to chairs. If you walk into a classroom now, you look at the chairs they have, the chairs are nothing like what we have when we went to school. It, it makes them more comfortable when you're sitting in the classroom. It costs money, but, but if it helps them get an education and feel more comfortable, those are the little things that I think that cost us, cost us money sometimes. I might, um, yeah. yeah, those are all good observations, I think, about what the challenges are with the schools. I think Maureen and I are both new, so we've sort of gone, we've gone to a few training, I've gone to one training, she's going to another one that explain the role of the school committee, and my understanding is that the school committee approves the budgets for, and helps put together, but I would say that we are somewhat at the mercy of the administration in terms of the details of the budget. Mm -hmm like you were explaining and so one thing that would be helpful and that we can work on is trying to kind of get more historical perspective and um, under better understanding of what the real drivers are of the budget um, the other thing is that we hire the superintendent but given the funny um, configuration of our district so we have no influence over the hiring or hiring within the school. That is all the principal who is hired by the superintendent. Right. So we, our role as a committee is to be part of the hiring of the superintendent. So of course, as Waitley being relatively small, we have some, you know, only a proportion of the whole committee. Um, now that Bob's in your role, you'll yeah. have, so we're her boss. Power, maybe. <laughs> And we have we have the ability to do the re we do the reviews and things yep. of the superintendent. And then the only other thing I think that we do would be approve policies. So to the extent that there are policies, but we really don't get involved in the curriculum or the teaching at all. That is sort of the purview of the administration. So I see our role as kind of working with the superintendent and managing the money, trying to make sure that we're managing money, and again putting it in the direction of the most value added areas. Do you, do you ever? Um you know, I, I get you, I hear that you don't get involved with the curriculum and you don't get involved with the, uh, the management of personnel in the schools and whatnot, but the fact of the matter is that you do have some control of the budget. Yes. And all of those other things are superfluous to that pot of money that's right in the center. If they can't get to that pot of money, then all these other things are in the, are can't on hold. happen. <laughs> right. So so but my point is that I think you have a considerable amount of uh, influence uh, far beyond what um, what has been exercised in the past, and I, and I just reflect back on um, a meeting that I attended. I think you were there. I think mm -hmm. you, were, you were there. We, we had a, we've got a new uh, superintendent who puts out a letter to everybody. I don't think she's been. She was there six months, and this letter couldn't have said better things ab about the state of education and the quality of education. There is no way on God's green earth that that woman could assess all of these schools 
six months. In six, in six months. months, and put that together, it was, it, it just, I mean, uh, and then I know we had had a meeting before, and we all said yes when you guys came in. Um, but I also noticed during that meeting, during the, and it talked about the budget, there was no pushback at all. But obviously you had had meetings before that where you probably had an opportunity to say yay or nay to certain things. So I understand that. Um, but we were hoping that, um, that maybe we could sort of work together on this whole thing. And, uh, and so I thought, so Brian's put some, um, put some numbers together to, to give us a sense of sort of where we're headed. Right. Can, can I just say something before we get it? it it's, and we all probably have a, a different reason for being here. Or, you know, we say we're, in, but this is my, ex my experience um, with the school budget is, uh, you know, we talk about insurance, we talk about contracts, we talk, <coughs> we're not going to tell the school committee or the administration how to educate our kids. I mean, that, that would be stupid. You know? I mean, that's, that's, so there's checks and balances. But the, the things that I think you guys are probably asking the question, or, or if not, probably should be, is again, we talk a look at, take a look at staffing and things like that. And, and, Bobby hit it right on the head, the one-to-ones and all that stuff. And, and those, are, if we take a look at a roster of what you have, it's gonna change from year to year. I mean, it, sh it should change from year to year. And me personally, I'm saying, I just wanna know, again, we get it, and here it is, it's 2.2% increase, and that's within reason, and we're like, we keep on using the word rubber stamp it. Um, and and that's that's great, you're not, you're not blowing us out of the water or anything, but, you know, there, there are questions that I always have, but I don't see the detail of it. And, you know, if we have 18 part-time one-to-ones or wh whatever they are, how can we have 18? Can't we get by with six? And it's the, it's the detail of it, I think, that really, that really matters. I, I, I want to make sure that there's not chaos in the classroom. I mean, I think that's, that's our responsibility. We, we want to make sure that it's a, it's a school that you know, everybody's comfortable in and everybody's getting the highest education that they can, but it's those little details. Now, I'm not going to take a look at the stationary line item and say, you know, boy, that's a lot of paper you guys are using. You know, that, that's not what we're doing, but where the big, where the big dollars are, I think that's the, that's the important thing, and obviously, Staffing is where the biggest dollars are, and however you allocate from one to, to the next, it, like I said, I mean, you know, contracts are given, you know, but it's those underlying staffing needs that I think there's a, there's a lot of, and there's probably more than, than just that, but I just, I guess that's it. You guys seem like you're, sound like you're asking those questions, and, but I'd love to be able to ask the questions as well, but we don't have enough of that information early on to ask that question or to actually make a, a, a difference and to make me and hopefully everybody else feel better about saying, yeah, we support, we support this budget, you know, um, and, and that's, that's, I guess, my so far. And, and the something that Paul said earlier that is important to me is that when we get the budget in the year, first of all, we don't have a lot of time, I understand the calendar consideration, but we're getting a snapshot. You know, a very, a still photo of where we are now as opposed to a movie of seeing you know, where things have been and where they're going. And I think that would be the, somehow if we can get. We're getting the, we're getting, it's driven by salary and benefits and that's it. That's what we right. get. And we get, we understand that. Right. I get that part. Right. But everything else is like murky. Mm -hmm. well, well, but, it, but, it's all, but it's also, as I said, static. And, you know, you can't yeah. see, you know, that there's a 9% increase here, mm -hmm. you know, on, in a certain area. Mm -hmm. Why? You know, mm -hmm. Some of, it, some of it is driven by enrollment, yeah. but, right. but if, if there's two more kids in the sixth grade, you're not going to get hire another sixth grade teacher, so the, the teacher's salary mm -hmm. is the same. Yes, one of those two additional students may need an aide, so you're, that's an expense. Mm -hmm. We don't, that's, those are the kind of, I don't, we don't ever see that, mm -hmm. and, you know, and the way it gets explained to us is we're, you know, most of us are pretty simple people here, and it gets, she sits there and, and explains it, and you're just, 
It's just like a wave coming at you. You yeah. cannot I get it. Yeah. understand it. Can, you, can when you deal no, with it, can you? Do you have well, a, I, I do feel like I can keep up sometimes, but, but I, do, yeah. I, I do have a desire to simplify it and to yes. add the color around. Well, the advantage that you have is that you revisit. I've been using. I've been you revisit it time and time for, again. We we have the one meeting and love to call you back, but still I right. can call you back, but I. I don't know what I'm going to right. ask a second time because I, I really don't have don't yeah. have that. Well, I mean, one thought I have, and this is something I wanted to do for our committee anyway, is to to kind of look at the year end last year and really understand what happened right. as we go into the new year, so that we can all and maybe that's something we can we can do ourselves first, so we understand it, and then that bring that to you a as a way change. to sort of start and to focus on the key <coughs> drivers, which are. Salaries and benefits, and enrollment and revenue. You know, where is the money coming from for students that are coming out of the district? And we now have this new preschool, which we're excited about, which is bringing some money in yeah. to the school. Right. So, how is that working? Yeah. Um, you know, one thing we did in the last few years is restructure the different funds so that things are being paid out of different funds. I'm still not totally clear on all the different funds no, within the my, school. I, you know, like I say, our first, our first. <laughs> page of all the line items, there's negatives in the first month. Right. And yeah. it's like, and so we, we ask the whole why, picture, sort of like you need the whole and it's something get, usually in salaries, it's being shifted somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple things that weren't salaries that were, I think it's something that Patty's, you know, after the first month where things get realigned. Shook out that, more. Exactly. Right. I mean, yeah. we don't know what the numbers are for school choice until the October meeting, usually yeah, right. it's like right. October 10th or something like that. You know, she she may be a genius in the way she makes all this work at the end of the year. Somehow she makes it all pretty well balanced out. Right. But the what we see of it is it 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 just looks like a financial disaster in the making. Yeah. Well, and then honest. she seems to always pull it out. Well, I'll be honest. I mean, the way that she presents it is is a lot more elementary than the. I mean, we <laughs> used to get the full budget, and I've tried to go through it. It's like, are you kidding me? You know. Yeah. So I mean, she's. It is a, a great snapshot of it. And before we had a budget oh, that was like this. That's you know. Yeah. Okay, let's so try. So she to summarized it. Right. She does. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a great yeah. job. She but, does a wonderful job. You know. I think. I, I, need I, to I, go think, the next I think the questions that you're asking. You know, I'm sure are the same questions that we're going to want to ask because yeah. of what your role as as uh, school committee members. It sounds like it really is based on budget, based on policy. And you know, I think that where we want, what we're looking for is to get through the course of the year a little better information, so we can ask better questions mm -hmm. when that budget finally gets yeah. hits right. us. And, and, to, and so it's not just suddenly this wall of numbers and we, uh, here approve it. You know, this committee here, you know, we're appointed. We're an apolitical committee, <laughs> absolutely, for the most part. Um, and, and with that, uh, you know, we take it upon ourselves, and I, I really believe everyone here, um, we represent everybody in town. Yeah. Not just the people that vote, mm -hmm. not just the people that come, that come to the um that come to the meetings uh the pe people that you know go to the town hall that, you know all the special interests now everybody everybody if they're a voter if they're in this town this group represents them um it represents them uh, it, it, part of that it goes along with a lot of those people don't have kids right yeah. <laughs> and we're spending their money absolutely on kids. absolutely and, we have to be able to <coughs> justify that. Right. that. I guess. And the more I think about this budget, because it's such a large percentage of the overall budget that we have, I think that we've been remiss, and I'll, I'll also say that school committee's been remiss as well, because you guys represent the town to the school, not just, you know, not just the kids. You represent all the voting and all the people that are and they voted for us. I was just going to say, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the kids didn't vote you in, right? No, taxpayers right, right. did. Right. But some of it by default. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at any any organization 
that spends a considerable amount of money that has to put a budget out at a certain, at, you know, before the year begins. As that year progresses, there is always a quarterly review of spend to budget. Spend to budget. Where, where are you? Here's the budget. What's it look like? Well, I was going to ask you, if you people ever review that on a monthly basis, once you settle down, you should have a fairly good idea of how much a month you're going to spend mm -hmm. to make the budget work for that year. Mm -hmm. Do you people review those numbers at all? Mm -hmm. the, the problem I see with the way Patty does it, which is supposedly the right way, is once a salary or for something, sometimes the salary is taken right out 100%. So it's tough to do a monthly thing when she takes the salary out. I think that's what she does. There again, I'm, I'm just told by our last, our last budget that we had there, but a lot of times, we do, like I said, we got negatives the first month. You know, where did we, you know, yeah. one was, you know, spending some extra money on software over like twenty five hundred dollars when it was budgeted for five thousand. You know, those are the little things that. But sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I think we could look year over year and see the same patterns, and we would know that every year we start off in the negative and grow. Like be. I don't think we we could be looking at it, and right. it would help us. Um, I think that. Patty does a masterful job of making sure we don't go over budget, from what I've seen. I don't think yes. we ever go over no. budget. So it's not really about, not that we shouldn't be managing the, the yeah. yeah, yearly budget. Yeah, if you're budget. Um, allotting so much money for software and you go way over, that's a problem. Right. That should definitely right. be a problem. But at the end of the day, it's a bottom line. Right, budget, I get, right? I get so, that, but it still should be a problem. Say, well, did we allocate enough? for this or not. But I think what I'm hearing is that we want to be looking at what are the trends and where are we going to be needing to either invest or not invest Ex money in the future so right. that exactly. we can be preparing for that. And, I mean, th this is never going to happen, but I mean, could there, could there be a, a time where money was returned to the towns because Never. well we, we didn't well we actually over budgeted and we mm. no does it happen i would bet dollars to donuts that it happens but you don't see it because those monies get redistributed within the budget and no one's following it because well right. the incentive is to spend it all well, right, at the right. end of the year yeah. right now it, frontier has, we have a system, we call it free cash, which is yep. a, a dumb name, but Frontier has a, a name for unspent funds that they retain. They do not give unspent funds back to the towns. Mm -hmm. In some ways, I understand that. I, I think that's probably a good system. She did use some of that money this year to help Possibly. Balance the budget or def uh, defray costs, whatever. But you know, sh there is a system in place for unallocated funds, or I don't, I don't remember what she called it, but I know well, we called her right. on it. But, yeah. Well, the fifth. I was just going to say that you know each we're only the elementary school, right? Right. So and that's why we're that's right. sort of we're starting, we're starting, starting, with starting with you. Frontier. Yeah. We, right. yeah, this frontier is a whole but different but quality. My understanding is our budget is the one that we have the most control over. Right. So true. That is true. kind of the that's only true. place that we can. But if you or us or we had the opportunity over a given year to look at different points in the year as to where the spend is to the budget. And we would become more familiar with the buckets that these monies are going into, that the line items that are making up the, bu the buckets, um, then over time, we start to grasp it. And it's, I mean, it's not going to happen overnight, but if we don't start something like this soon, okay, Brian, you're on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to add, I mean, you say, I, I, I can't remember if we ever gone over budget that we need to go to a special town meeting to get some monies to pay for something. In other departments in town, do we go over budget 
whether it's the highway because we had a bad winter or yeah. something like sure. that. Is that usually the only one that would go over is because of a bad winter? Pretty much. Pretty. Yeah, winter. pretty that's much. One that we can, that's one that we can overspend. <laughs> that's one you can overspend and not yeah. get into okay. difficulty. But that's but, not the only but one. But anybody could go over budget. Yeah, any problem. department. Right. Anything yeah. could happen. Yeah. Yeah. But in that right. case, there again, you have to have a special town meeting right. to appropriate the money from, from free cash. Mm, usually not. We have something called a reserve fund. Okay. So we can do the reserve we fund. We can do a reserve fund transfer if it's a large expense, then we might do it out of free cash. I mean, in the case of having money at the end of the year, you know, there's there's certain things, we'll say this past year, uh, FY17 budget, um, that we did have some extra money, but there were some desperately needed things to be done on the property that needed to be sure. done. So that's where, you know, that's where that's the money, where, that's where the money well, So that's the good thing. That's what we, you guys are the watchdogs of, yeah. of that. They're just not going sure. out and just, just, spending, just yeah. spending the money because they haven't. You're the watchdogs, yeah. you know, I mean, for that. That's right. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think the other thing I would comment is that we're, in the last few years, we've really been trying to tease out the capital budget from the operating budget right. and trying to really identify what are the expenses and the needs on the capital side so that we can get into the town's capital budgeting process more. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> earlier and um, maybe hopefully not too big of a presence but right um, because it seems like the school has been using the operating budget sometimes to cover capital expenses because they had to but if we can get a clearer picture and we're trying to push the school to give us more of a picture of what do we need three five years out That's so that we can be thinking um, and Don was really good about pushing that yeah. I think but if you, if, you, if you can't you know you're talking about being negative how do you get to a positive you know, <laughs> so you're, you're negative in the first, so I, I guess to your point is, you know, Trent, you're not going to be, if you're going quarterly, you're not going to have 25% of your budget spent in the first quarter. You're not going to have 50, you know, that just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you can't, if you're starting off with negatives, it, 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 you have no data to work with. So if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing I would ask you guys to push back on Patty saying, I understand how you what you're doing, and it all works out at the end. But we're we're keeping an eye on this thing. Can we? Is there a better way that we can do this? Because we we want to help manage the budget. That's a, that's one of our biggest responsibilities here. And you know, honestly, I mean, I would if, if we just say it's okay, then just work on policy. So you know, just trust her that that she's going to do a, a great I'm, job. Right. I'm going to speak for Frontier now. Like we had our first eight, ten pages, and Billy Smith is great, yep. line item this. Why is there a naked? I mean, there was like four or five of them at Frontier, and Billy picked up, you know, a couple of people said something, and there again, it's a shuffling, but you're right. Why are we shuffling? Why aren't they? Why are we shuffling the up? first month of the, exactly. of the budget? Well, exactly. I don't know. I might take it. it, it might, sometimes it's salaries. Yeah. So that if somebody is getting paid out of this line item, it's getting shifted to another line item that right. had less money, so that money from that line item hasn't come up there to take care of that negative yeah. yet. <clears throat> that's where that person was supposed to be, but they, they wanted to come out of that one. That's that's in salaries. The other ones, software. I think one was software. You know, like I said, maybe two thousand dollars that was desperately needed and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Some things like home heating. I mean, like uh, heating. I remember years past. You know, one of the ways to get the budget down, we look at the last four or five years on, you know, heating oil or, or natural gas. Yeah. And it's, that's where we can start cutting, or electricity. It's how we can buy the electricity and how we can buy natural gas that a group us all together and that's how we buy it so we can knock 5000 or $10,000 off that line item for this coming year, how we, how we could save money. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need to cut that yeah. a little bit more and turn the thermos, you know, I'm a big believer in my household, boy. Turn it down. 62 degrees in my house. That's right, sweatshirts. Yep. You know, I, you know, I'm a big believer. I, I've gone into the school over the years where it was 70 degrees on a Saturday. And it is. Drives you nuts. And, and it has a lot to do with other electronical parts there, but I think they got to dial in, but still, it's like. Yeah. You know, there, there are, I'm sure there are a myriad of things that, that, that we can, um, 
touch upon where little tweaks here and there are going to make the difference. But from my experience, you can have all the faith in the world, somebody who puts a budget together that they have your best interest at heart. If they think you don't know what they're doing, that's a problem. Okay. And I guarantee you right now that when Patty goes around to all these towns, she does a great job, but she has nothing to worry about. No one's going to ask her a question coming out of left field that would stump her. Okay. Why? Pretty much because nobody touches the budget until she comes around. So if we can develop some kind of a, a looking glass into the budget as the year goes on, once or twice, three times, whatever, we become familiar with that budget. And I think long term, that's when we start to pick in a good way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with that, and I think that's what I'd like to move towards for mm -hmm. the school committee and with working with Patty. And she's very open to sure. creating new reports in other ways. And I have no interest in micromanaging the budget no. because I don't think that's no. how we're going to get. It's the not savings. micromanaging. You want to be able to ask hard questions, right? That, and what, and you want to be and able to get a good answer. The right choices. But um, the other piece that I think the opportunity for savings has to do with regionalization, and I think that that's a very tricky topic. Mm -hmm. And so we do need to partner with you on thinking about that because, yeah. like um, Bob was saying, if we really want good savings on the fuel, right now everything is school by school, <coughs> is what we're learning, and that's not how you're going to get economies of scale for costs, some of these costs, and the lunches are wow. sort of still school, and the schools are trying, but I think they do need to work with the towns more to get that figured out. Why has there been such a stumbling block to regionalization. I, for years, I haven't understood why the elementary schools aren't regionalized. Because you're, cause you're part the of the way Lake. <laughs> in the town of Deerfield, well, not Deerfield, but Conway, they're not going to give up their school. No, no I'm not, I don't well, want to give up my school. But that's what people think. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, but you know, we're, 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 we're going to send the first, the preschool, kindergarten first to Conway, or maybe not to Conway, we're going to keep them up down this side of the hill and everybody's going to have to get bussed out of Conway to these other schools. Wait, we will take fifth and sixth. But that's, that's real that's shift. Yeah. But no one wants to give up their elementary school. Yeah. But no operationally, is, I guess this is the first step. Oh, operationally. Right. Yeah. That's the opportunity initially. Let me but just back up just a little, a little bit. I'm, I would have said regionalization would be the four schools might have two principals for the four schools, but each town would still have its own school. I wasn't yeah, okay. aware of, you know, that we might be moving kids around and doing this and that. Maybe 10 years from now. That's the, what I think is the elephant in the room that nobody's ever, nobody likes to talk about is the declining enrollment. Exactly. Well, and, you know, Waitley and Conway are kind of in the same boat in that the number of their own kids is declining. Well, Sunderland's and growing Deerfield. too, right? I mean, they, no, they Sunderland are, is growing. Yeah, they are. Sunderland's Nobody growing. wants to share resources. Yeah. You have to realize. Nobody wants to share. But what? They have I don't know why. I don't, I'm not in, I mean, you know, I maybe don't, I don't want to share, share my students with the other schools, but I want to get a better deal on my eating Nobody wants to share resources. And my milk. It's like so having the same lunches, and every school should have the same lunch, and well, they don't. But, they, right, they, but right now, we, we are working on that, because every school's... Yeah, right, right, I, I get that. Last year, $70,000. There's no yeah. way they should serve different lunches in every Our school, school every day. We, Ten, nine. We're, we've been in a negative for... And we have to balance that, because that's the law. We have to balance the school program by the end of the year, so the extra money that we get yeah. has to balance that out. So we're in that process. We hired a firm. They've done a study of all five schools. Uh, we have a person right now, an intern person working at Frontier, um, basically running the program. We're going to be possibly, when they, we do hire the new person, 
all five schools basically on the same menu to save money. We're gonna take advantage, like if I was told the other day, if we buy chicken, or we get free chicken from the government, we can give the Tyson, Tyson can make chicken nuggets for us. Yeah. Uh, if we get free uh, ground beef, we can give it to this person, they can make meatballs, just to give you an idea. So yeah. these are the things, I mean, some kids will have spaghetti and meatballs and get a spaghetti and meat sauce type of thing. It's, but that's what we're, that's what we're working with, with this new, this yeah. new company that's gonna help us hopefully hire the right person that's gonna run all five schools and get us back up, you know, instead of the seniors going over to Subway or Primo's for a slice of pizza or uh, grinders at lunch, we're gonna offer that at Frontier. Right now we're doing three, three different types of pizza every day there. But there's a lot of change management related to this in terms of the people, the personnel, the messaging. So it's a big project to yeah. try and, mm -hmm. um, and it really would benefit from a little more, I think, collaboration and communication across sure. the towns and across the committees. There was a regional study done at one point. I don't know if anybody knows about that or knows the status of that. No one knows the status. Okay. Because <laughs> I thought you might. <laughs> we, gave, we gave money. Right. Brian? Brian? We gave, we gave money to Frontier. <laughs> yeah. All of the towns yeah. gave money yeah. to Frontier to create this study. Regional facility study? Yeah, it was about two yeah. years ago now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was through UMass, mm -hmm. and no one has seen anything. Mm -hmm. Try yeah. to find the person. I, I think I, think I can give you an update. I can give you an update too. Oh, okay. yeah. okay. uh, first of all, we have not spent money. Ooh, no, still the money. We still hold the money, and we should still hold the money. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was an unmitigated disaster. Is probably too strong, but pretty close. Um, so I don't. I don't expect a report. Okay. okay. But we didn't spend the money. So no. At least not spend the money. Room. Anything you want to add, Bob? No. You <laughs> summed it up pretty good, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's been been just that, we, we heard that at Frontier. Yeah. Meeting last week, so it's, it's been two and a half years yeah. since that yeah, that's enough. work was yeah. first. Superintendent yeah. says, you know, we haven't got it. What's going on? And the guy, you know, it just, I, I, just, one thing we didn't I remember anymore. the guy. Yeah. It just, yeah. it just didn't yeah. come together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Two and a half years. It's, it's time to. Why don't you give us a little? Uh, you yeah. did, you, you did some work here, here, and uh, why don't we give you some time? Well, I just, I don't want to get too far into the weeds in any of this, but. Again, the reason why this is important, in fiscal year 18, school operations of the three schools cost, uh, made up 56% of the town's budget. So by and far, it's our largest category of spending. Um, so there's also um, a table in here that shows the approved budgets from going from F, uh, fiscal year 12 to through fiscal year 2018, and there's the elementary school, there's Frontier, and there's Franklin Tech. Focusing on the, on the elementary school, through the, the average change in the budget during this time was around 2%, 2% increase. Um, just give us some historical perspective. And one of our One of our concerns, and I think Patty brought this up when, when we were talking about when we were talking about the last year's budget, was um, the decline in school choice revenue that's coming in. Mm -hmm. So the receiving tuition is is, is dropping. The number of uh, um, students coming in, school choice students coming in, is dropping. Mm -hmm. So there's less revenue coming in, and that's obviously something we'll have to pay attention to for next year's budget. It's a source of revenue that won't be there, so it's going to, it needs to be shifted somewhere else. Assuming that we need to pay those costs, it needs to come from somewhere else. And the default is typically the T word we don't like to talk about. Um, so I guess sort of looking at F FY19, we'll have to pay attention to that. Can I interrupt for a second? Yep. I know you're just talking about this school choice, and I'm not sure if this is school choice or charter schools, or I mean, this is, if this is all, if it's just not 
getting into 10 kids and 10 kids going out. It's also charter schools that are, are hurting us all oh, yeah. on, on, on the frontier end of it. So, right? The preliminary, what we were told for this year, we were going to be in the positive with school choice and um, the charter school end of things, the payments um, as of the preliminary. There you go, no money. We meaning Waitley? Frontier. Frontier. So uh, I think in the case of Waitley, I think. For the, right, for the I, town, we get, we, yeah. have an, we get assessed a charter school sending tuition. Yeah. Which really, there was the big there was a big ballot initiative to expand charter schools and it failed. Uh, it failed, unfortunately. It, it, but they're still trying. A lot of yeah. what wasn't discussed was the the line was well, we're not taking money away from public schools. Well, technically, okay, you're not taking out of their budget, but you're taking out of the town's budget because mm -hmm. we're getting that assessment and it's big money. Right, oh, yeah. and it's it, it hurts the towns because we need to fund Whaley Elementary School, whether there's 147 kids or 149 kids. It probably doesn't make much of a difference in our budget. No. But if those two kids are going out to charter schools, then we need to pay the Whaley Elementary School budget, and we need to pay the charter school. Um, so more kids go to charter. We still have to pay the elementary school, but now our share of char our charter payment gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Yep. So is the charter payment in this, these numbers, or where would it be in these numbers? These, this, this is separate from, from charters. So charter's not in these numbers right. that you're, you're showing us? Yeah. I just wanted to show, Patty had mentioned it, that, that they like to spend school choice one year in arrears, mm -hmm. yeah. and we've actually, I think we've actually uh, gone through it already. Yeah. Um, we've already spent some of mm -hmm. FY18, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so that money's not going to be there when we come around to budget it. This year. Yeah, this year. So, it's, again, what, how does that, this, how do those this, costs get paid for? And we were told last year, we were told last year that this coming FY 18, 18 19, yeah. Yeah, I guess I'm looking at, is going to be a tough year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Part of it's because of what you're saying there. It just, it just, the, the, the it, it's going to hit. I'm, I'm not sure what the exact number is yet. But that number is going to be a bigger number where, you know, we're, it's great having this meeting because it's going to affect, it's going to affect everybody. Mm -hmm. And we were, we were warned while we were doing the budget, this budget. With Last the budget. Year. Right. Yeah. yeah, we had, and we had this sort of the same discussion yeah. here. So that's going to be another negative start. I, it's, it's. Well, that, that's why I mean, I, I had mentioned last year, and, and I know this is lately, but Bob, you're a resource for us for, for Frontier, because charter schools is probably the biggest problem that we're, we're facing as far as funding goes, is when we take a look at our magic number for how many school choice kids we get in, right, my feeling is that we're bringing in so many now that we're adding staff to support that. But it's not a one-to-one. -one. It's not where somebody's going out, somebody's coming in. Right. Now we get the charter school that's going out. It doesn't equate. So, I mean, I'm oversimplifying it, but I'm basically saying we should not be taking in as many school choice kids because we are adding extra staff to support them. And the kids, the charter school kids are, are it's eating up all those dollars going out. So it's, it's not, you know, I'm gonna say it's $5,000 versus $15,000. So it's a three to, it's a three to one. Right. Yeah. So for every one that goes out, you've got to almost have three less school choice kids and hopefully get down to that magic number where you're not adding an additional teacher or something to, to absorb. Well, Whaley no. doesn't have that. No, I was going to say, we're not doing that in Whaley. Oh, excuse me? Whaley doesn't have I know Whaley does. It is, no. uh, that's this, for this the is, other schools. This is, this is all towards charter schools. Yeah. And that was my, that's my soapbox thing. We, did, we didn't hire schools. any additional no, teachers. We only have one class. Yeah. 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 No, this, 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 again, this was based on my, front, my frontier observation. Yeah. Yeah. This, this isn't. But Deerfield and, and, has that issue. Right. Yes, right. you get upside. You're upside down. Yeah, we were yeah. we were told they had a big Yeah, you got an infrastructure built just for. But now you throw that if, wild card if in. If we if we decided like this next year, because the kids that are their school choice have the right to go from yeah. there up to Frontier, 
if we decided starting next year not to take any more school choice kids, the, the classroom, to work, if we have 10 kids per classroom, we still got to have a teacher per classroom. Yep. If we bring in a school choice kid that requires that, we got 5,000, requires a one-on-one aid, that, that, town, 10, that, that town pays for every penny of uh, that oh, aid really? because it's it's not only the 5,000, it pays for every single penny that, that required for that, that, that school choice kid coming in. So it's not 5,000, oh, we're gonna, luckily we're gonna go to Wakeley and Montague doesn't have to, pay. bingo, they have to pay for every but single penny. But the same is that. true for us. But it's vice versa too. Yeah, but it, that's if, that's if, you know, if we have a school choice kid, whatever reason wants to go to Hatfield, he goes to Hatfield, it's $5,000. Hopefully there's no spread related costs that go, with, them. go yeah. with them and stuff. Then yeah. it costs you, instead of five, it may cost you 75, it may cost you $10,000. Yeah. The programs that, that we have in-house within the five schools, I shouldn't even say Frontier, but the four schools, we can we can take care of certain kids in our district because of the different programs yeah. we have. If if we didn't have any of these programs at Deerfield or Conway, all these all these we'd be hurting so right. bad for money right. Right. to send a kid for thirty or forty thousand dollars to a, a place that could take care of our kids. Yeah, we're lucky to keep it in house, which which helps one hundred percent. We are lucky. But also, that's your job. That's why I'm paying you, Mrs. Superintendent, to figure this out so that those monies don't leave. In fact, we're paying you to make sure no one leaves. Unfortunately, that's not happening. That's not the real world. It's no, it's not. It's not the real world. But I don't. I don't want any. I don't want the schools to come back and say we're doing you a favor. Okay, which is kind of what happened last year. You're not doing me any favors. You're doing what you are being paid yeah, you're working to for do. Us. Yeah. You're, 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 you're working, working for us. For us. And, and if, if you ship all these kids out, you know what's gonna happen? You're gonna lose teachers. Yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna lose people. And so, you know, all of this is for the greater good, but you're not, you know, but you those don't get but those positions. programs have their own teacher. They, oh, I know that. At those schools, right. they have their own. They have their own teacher that there. So it's not like they have. They hired somebody, but to take care of those kids, yeah. which is important. It's mm -hmm. you know, some some districts don't have the luxury of having what we have in our district. I guess that's been made up. We have great administrators. Oh, great. We have great administrators right. that started this mm -hmm. frontier. We have we have a couple programs there at, at Frontier that we can keep kids to. I'm going to say 22, 24, 22. Oh, 24. Yeah, 22. Yeah. yeah, I mean those programs mm -hmm. are very costly, but we we're able to do it in house, and I know some of those kids. No, we were ahead. Of, we were ahead of the curve on that, cool. and so they needed people needed to spend kids here, and so that was a that was a, a lot great. Yeah, that was yeah. that was great. But in the ecosystem of all the schools in the western side of the state, we are a beneficiary right now right. of school choice. We have people that want to come to our district, okay. and that's a positive. But as we are observing, both those numbers and our resident numbers are going down. Yeah. So overall, we're still stuck in a very challenging situation as sure. we look at budgets going forward. Well, it's, so, it's great when you say district, because that, that's really, you know, you call it district, you call it regionalization, whatever it is. We have we have four elementary schools that are that are brand new, that are great schools, that are great right. sources of educating the kids and everything. The problem is, <laughs> we've got four big four buildings that we're heating, we're doing all, we're maintaining, mm -hmm. and we just, you know, without school choice, once again, we're, we're going to all be upside down. And Waitley is one of those schools, you know. Yeah. Waitley is one that oh, yeah. is going to, you know, sure. without school choice, <coughs> we're we're in trouble. Yeah, and the other well. thing is yeah. that affordable housing. You hear over and over, we hear over and over, it's that young families cannot afford to move to Wayne. No. And so they are the people we need to come to help us with the school, you know, bring right, exactly. students to right. the schools. And it's a bit of a circular error in that you don't have a lot of young families moving in. You know, even like Marty used to talk about her kids couldn't afford to live here, Marty Barrett. Like, yeah. 
that's a problem. We need if we want the schools to survive, yeah. we need more residents sending their kids to. You to you, leave. you don't want. You know how many houses I mean, there are in the development off along Plain Road. Those are all four, five hundred thousand dollar houses. Somebody with three kids isn't buying one of those houses. Right. So right. you don't see families with five kids anymore. No, you know, no. Wow. It's, a, it's a very different world. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Depends where you go. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, it happens. Just not happening here. No, not here. Um, mm -hmm. So I mean, I think there's a lot of things that are connected that oh, it's, we need it's to all be connected. thinking about. It's all connected. Yeah. So that, you know, I I, I mean, it's seven o'clock, and, and yeah. um, you know, I think we could continue this discussion until the cows <laughs> come home, so to, so to speak, right? Um, is there anything you'd like to just you know, before we start to wrap up that you'd like to say or, or suggest or? I think I think. I think the meeting was. I think the meeting like this is great. I think uh, maybe next time we get together, that that you know, you can come to any of our school committee meetings and get you know the budget. You know what we have that Patty gets to us. Mm -hmm. Maybe you guys should get one once a month just to, at your meeting. And you can pass it around, idea. or Brian can make copies for you. But these should get. Mm -hmm. You can ask questions like this. Why is you know why is it negative? Why why is it negative? Well, just the fact of knowing that the five thousand in the school choice comes in, and if they need an aid, the aid money comes in too. I mean, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that That's at all. I didn't, I didn't oh know yeah, that. absolutely. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, not, it's not coming out of weight these parts. But I'll, I'll but I'll be honest. That was one question we had internally last year was staffing. Look at look at all these one to ones. Look at all. And, and so that that was you know if there's a quick answer for that then all of a sudden we check that off and again we don't want to micromanage so what, the one but, you know the one on one is do we hire somebody who will say what well, I'll just throw that, just a number hire that one or do, does that person go somewhere else right yeah that costs us two to three times more money and that's yeah that's the one on one. Yeah. And I do think Pete and Patty have been doing a good job of kind of repurposing positions to the extent that they don't necessarily always need all the one of And that's that's the line item thing. If if, that's if I was working there and I was supposed to be taking care of this line item here, but they wanted me to go work, and that has to come out of that line mm -hmm. item, and that's that's where we get in the negatives right off the bat is because of, of certain uh, salaries. Right. Yeah. Not yeah. software, but salaries. But I, I do hear you saying we need to tell the story more and help you understand. Help you us know, understand where our money's going. I, I, I assume you, you get those numbers every month from Patty yeah. in the form of an email with an attachment yeah. or something. Do you get copied on that? Can Brian or Paul get copied on that, and then distribute it. Send it to Brian. Yeah. And then distribute it to us, and then I'll, if we have any questions, we would go through you. Absolutely. But, I mean, I think you know, that'd not be great too, idea. Not too many thoughts. Well, maybe we'll I think mean, it's so me. You right. guys may say, you know, for one of your meetings. Yeah, and right, but, but also just the ongoing would give us an idea of how the, through the year, the budget yeah. functions. Yeah. Budget attainment. That's, that's. But when you, you guys, when you guys have your meeting, one, usually, we, and then after January, usually. Well, after January, we start meeting once a month. I can't remember meeting in September. We're going to start. We're going to have meeting start in October, October and yeah. no, November. Yeah. yeah. And then we're, we're going to start meeting once a month in January. Okay. I mean, even if Brian gets them and get gets copies or get, get Patty to get you on the email, I mean, right? I mean, putting someone on an email, email is real cheap and yeah. easy. Yeah. Right? yeah. Right. Well, and I, I echo what Bob said. I think it's great that we're having a conversation and we are thinking about this together. I, this gives me a little more um, help, and I wanted to put together a summary for the budget mm -hmm. report that maybe is a little easier to digest for everybody. So I'm hoping to work with Patty to put something like that together that maybe could be what we send out on a monthly basis. Yeah. Because again, there is a lot right. of detail, and you guys already have a lot of detail. It would be, I, I think, think that that's that, more in line with what we, what we would like to get is some type of a summary, quarterly or, or mm -hmm. monthly. Right. We don't want to get into line items. Right, you don't need to know all the That's not our job. Right. I'd rather I'd rather work with Patty to try and get that in place so that we can. If, if you could that. do that, I don't want to create more that. work for right. anybody. Right. See, well, I was just going to say we no budget in this town is strictly a line item budget. We don't we don't tell right. the highways the highway superintendent comes in and he presents his budget 
and he's got a total number at the end. Yeah, it's broken down, you know, salaries, winter roads, sand, salt, fuel, whatever. But at the end of the year, if, if he has extra money in the fuel account and he wants to buy road salt to stock up, that's fine. We don't line item anybody's right. budget and we really don't want to line item the, the school budget we just want to get a better handle on you know if she's shifting money around i mean what why is she doing that what what's yeah. i you know you've kind of explained it that you know this aid might be here now and it needs to be over there so yeah but if, if it's been done on a consistent basis in right. the same way we want to yeah. why, we want to know why <laughs> why is the planning but we don't. We're not interested in line item or nickel and diming anybody's right. budget. Really, as as a stand right now, we don't have the power of why. No, we we can't really intelligently ask those kinds of questions. And unless we deal with the budget more frequently, in uh, in simpler terms, then that's never going to happen because it rolls downhill. If you don't, ch if we don't challenge that budget internally at Frontier, nobody challenges the departments who submitted their budgets to create that budget. It all runs downhill and it has to start with somebody pushing back. If nobody pushes back, those numbers just year Keep after going. year just climb. And that's, we got to start at some point, and I, I think this is the line in the sand where we got to say, it's up to us to understand it better and be able to ask intelligent questions about the budget itself. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, our school, the only thing is our school's getting older. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. Every year there's something comes up, yeah, we got to so spend money, carpets. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Well, I think it's important to know how to capital. The capital. The capital, the capital yeah, instead of trying to take these yeah. things out of operational budgets right. Right. to get a fix. Yeah. It just, it's the five year, seven year, ten yeah. year yeah. getting there. But the carpets, I know teachers like carpets, but tile, uh, I think we just switched uh, pre K and kindergarten and the, the connector between them just got changed. And I think first grade got changed to all, all tile. They can have like little carpet throw rugs, throw rugs and stuff yeah. like that, but um, easier to clean, yeah. healthier. I, I, They'll last way longer. I can't wait to put the carpets out of my top of my house upstairs. Yeah. Uh, everything got ripped out a few years ago. It just holds too much, yeah. especially if somebody has allergies. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's big time. You know, as long as we keep the building up to snuff and it should last for forever. It should last a long time because you're, you're talking to someone who's children went to the center school yeah. and the brain <laughs> school and they both they all went to college they all came out they all have jobs they're all doing well and those schools were <laughs> went to I, kindergarten I, I, downstairs in the center school <laughs> today knowing my children went to school there but you know something no matter what the walls look like it, it all comes down to what's going on in that Lights classroom side. with yeah. the teachers and what's going on at home too uh, but that's um, a different yeah hey don't yeah. you want the blue school back oh no but it's not even <laughs> no, I think we decided no. Fred does. Fred wants the new school. No, I don't want it. I no. too. And we're, and we're working on it. I mean we're working on coming up with a, a plan there and yeah. I'm on that committee too. Who goes so. there? Yeah. Uh, no one. Yeah, we'll hire the lights on. Bob check goes, it. doesn't he? Bob Lesko goes. So I mean, we have, we have, right now we have important stuff stored Files. there right now, so. Oh, that's why the lights are on. So we have stuff up in the, uh, the like the cafeteria area upstairs was, we it's brought everything up from the basement. It's probably something like that. that. We're coming up with a plan with, with Frontier <laughs> and the town of Wake, we're trying to sell possibly both parcels into one. It's, you know, yeah. can't do one without the other, yeah. but. But that's that's down the road. So, but we're, we're we're you know we're trying to do stuff. So, okay. Well, uh, would you like to have another meeting? So, I mean, it's, I know you got. I mean, we we, we can have your meetings too. Yeah. Uh, come on. Yeah. Oh sure. Maybe you could. You know, last time like somebody other than Joyce Palmer Fortune that came to our meeting. Oh, Paul Me? came. Oh, oh, oh actually, I did once, <laughs> once last year. Once last year. Is once better than nothing? That's true. Sometimes. Okay, we invite people. We invite people all the time to come to our meetings. We yeah. don't have. I didn't see 
I get more kids sitting in the pen. audience now, one sometimes pen. than anything. Now, one panel at a school committee meeting. I was shocked. Maureen used to come. Challenge. Maureen, Maureen used, used to come. come. Now she's on the committee. Her into That's, the why nobody, <laughs> That's why nobody comes. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, everybody everybody watches it on TV. Yeah. That's what I hear. It doesn't happen in Deerfield, I'll tell you that much. Oh. In fact, no. they get rid of print principles we over don't want, there. Right? Yeah. So, you know, uh, we don't want that. We don't necessarily issue. want that. But now, this is, this is also, you know, I've been on the committee a long time, so it was really nice when Katie came aboard a couple of years ago, and when Don decided not to come, we we were hoping Maureen would we talk to her. We, we talked to her, and then Maureen came aboard, and I think it's a it's a good fit. Yeah. Um, Katie is chair at Wheatley because um, knowing that I was possibly going to be voted in at at Frontier, I really wanted I didn't want to do, try to do double duty, but no. Katie is a perfect person there because she does because she does sleep with one of the sleepers. <laughs> <laughs> I have no influence. <laughs> But it does speak again, I think, to the lack of engagement of younger families. Yeah. It's hard to find people to volunteer. That's no, right. So, I mean, you guys are voted, they voted for us. Right. Yeah, see, we didn't. We got appointed for yeah. life. We have to get, we get appointed. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for coming. coming. It's good to meet everybody. Take care, neighbors. All right, to get out of here. Say hi to your wife. Tell John I will. She asked about you all the time. I said, I do see him out and outside playing. No, oh, I'm still kicking. Yes. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thanks. All right, next on our agenda here. Well, we do the minutes yet? Yeah. Uh, I, make a, I make a motion we accept the minutes of the July 19th meeting. I right, sorry. All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Yeah, we don't that. Done. Discussion on hiring. Senior, what happened with the. Did we get any uh, applicants? Um, the uh, the res job applications are due this Friday. Oh, okay. Twenty first. Um, so we have we have some applications. Yeah. Okay. Good. And at the same time, we're also um, Mary, Mary Ellen's going to be reducing uh, the number of hours she works at the time. Uh -huh. So yeah. you know she's going to be pretty much coming to part time treasurer quick. But right now she does both positions. Um, and she's going to mostly focus on that, which leaves the, the need to hire an executive assistant. Ex executive assistant or administrative assistant. Um, one of the con one of the cons not concerns, but one of the issues that that's come up is that we're trying to figure out how many hours a week we should advertise this position. Um, and looking at the amount of work that's available and. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever been to the back side room over here, but that is filled with boxes from the move that have not been gone, not been gone through. Um, so there's plenty of work. There's, there'll be plenty of work without um, trying to tackle that stuff. Um, so the, when the personnel committee talked about it, the personnel committee I think we approved uh, 30 hours per week. Um, I'm more comfortable starting around 24 hours a week. I think it's easier to increase somebody's yeah, hours later on absolutely. than it is to decrease somebody's yeah. increase someone's hours later on. Um, but if you look at the if you look at the, the, the select board budget, I know we don't do line item budgets, but if you look at the salary line item, and we're looking at hiring around $18 an hour. Mm -hmm. um, now, just as a suggestion, yep. you know, you're hiring someone to come in. Um, who has ongoing responsibilities the minute they hit the ground. Yep. And you have all the stuff in the back room. Yep. It's just sitting in boxes. Yep. Can't you hire a couple of kids out of the high school for min minimum wage to s some responsible kids to, to sort it out and store, stack it? And it has, I have thought about that or I've thought about potential trying to find interns whether it's at UMass or somewhere. Mm -hmm. Where I used to work, we actually, um, we actually had a work-study student who was working um, for organization and was paid through the work-study program. So that's a low-cost or no-cost option I was gonna to try to explore mm -hmm. for, that, for that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, but until that happens, um, there why, will be- Why can't we approach Frontier, our own kids, 
We could pay our own kids our money. Yeah, that'd be a great to, idea. To but I don't know if you can get anybody to do it. Well, you have to approach. You got to try. You, you got to try. You, you got to go through the prince principal yeah. or, or the school <coughs> or the principal guidance down counsel, to, to guidance, and the guidance is going to pick out a couple of kids who yeah. Yeah. may have, you know, may be able to take up the initiative to do that kind of thing. Yeah. But I would, That's I would fine. certainly rather pay, you know, too. a kid from down the road yeah. than than. Um, Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Frontier was looking at that to create out the blue school, you know, they thought, well, we'd hire students to do it, but they realized that they can't do that because of security and, and confidentiality of what's in there. And they're looking at contracting to hire somebody while coming in and they have to sort themselves, I think, to shred all that stuff yeah. and get rid of it. It's not like you're going to hire students to do all that. They've looked at that, so I you know, one of the one, ask and see, but one of the issues you, you have with it, I think, is that okay, the, the the kid who doesn't have any activities and doesn't have any sports, and their day ends at what time, and your day is going to end. I mean, there, there still is a super supervision, right? I mean, you're not going to have them come in on a weekend and do mm -hmm. it. You're not going to have them work six to ten. You know, I mean, so yeah, I think that's the difference with blue schools that you'd have to have a supervisor there. As well, you can't just yeah. send kids over and say, "Yeah, you're on your own." It's Whereas working here, you're going to have people. Well, as long as they're here. Before you quit. Well, right. that's what I'm saying. Their, their day is so you're going to give them an that's hour or two a day. I mean, I don't even know but, what Brian's yeah. hours are. But what, whatever the hours are, you know, Brian or Lynn or Mary right. Ellen would be here as opposed to kids going to shred or do something. The blues. Well, I understand that, but they're going to. the earliest they're going to get over here is two thirty, I guess. And is it, you know? Yeah. Um, I all I know is that if you don't try, you don't get. And there's always going to be a problem. There's always going to be a hurdle. There's always going to be an yeah, issue. Give it a whirl. It's never yeah. going to be perfect. But if, if you don't reach out to uh, try to help the kid next, next door, you can help yourself out at the same and time. Even if it's only a couple hours a day. A couple hours a day for a couple of kids. Yeah, start catching a dent right. in the mountain of stuff that's sitting there. Right? Yeah. I would just say that the other reason for an assistant, I know Brian has said much to you guys about that, is I started this effort kind of two years ago when, when Mark was here, realizing that he was getting overloaded and every meeting we had, we kept throwing more stuff on and on him to do it. And stuff wasn't really getting done. And, and I looked at the hours he was spending, that's when we were advertised for uh, Mary Ellen to be assistant treasurer yeah. or whatever. Uh, and we gave her some hours to help out the, the uh, administrator, but I looked at other towns in Franklin County. Furcog did a salary, has a salary survey, position survey, whatever you want to call it. And other towns similar to size as us had assistants on their staff or full-time, two people in the administrative part of the office. So I proposed that we we hire somebody at that time. Well, that's about the time that, that Mark left. Yeah. Uh, so because I realized we needed to do something then. The other thing that we did back then is we came up with a priority list of projects that we wanted the town administrator to address. We've got 25, 30 items on there today. Yeah. We, we can't get so, to all of them, so we prioritize that. Exactly. So, so some assistance is needed to help our administrative staff on, on some of them activities. Now, it's more than just shredding paper. I mean, maybe making copies or, or checking references or calling businesses or whatever that gets done, that, that can be done by, by somebody that's more than just a student, I think you need. Well, I think that's a different. That was a that was a I'm back end kid to go boxes. boxes. Well, you know, right, but, but, but it's more but than the, just. But, but the other quite question yeah. that, I, that I, you, you know, Fred, I've never been a selectman. I don't know what the job entails, but I got just one question for you. How when how much um, administrative stuff does a selectman do? Forget 
forget the administration, the actual, your, how much do you do when you leave here, when you leave a meeting, how much do you do in terms of administrative responsibilities for, for that list? Or is it all on him? Well, he's, he's, there, there, there are three of you. Right, and we, the three of us, come up with that list. And we, in conjunction with, with Brian, he agrees that these are the priorities. But, but who's, but who's how much, of that list, how much does Joyce take and do? How much does John, and how much do you do? I, I don't know about the other, the other two, if, if what they do, if anything. Uh, I do things that I guess I have time for or have an interest in. I don't go home and just wait two weeks for the next meeting. That's great. Uh, as Brian will tell you, I, maybe I bother him too much. Uh, either on the phone or I come visit him, but... But what I think, uh, what, what I think, I think you need to take those admin administrative responsibilities, start whacking them up between the three of you, so that the admin does, doesn't have so much to do, so we're not hiring more people out there. If you guys want to be the selectmen, it's more than just every other Tuesday. Right, but there are some things that we cannot do that have to be done by the no question. administrator. No question. I agree with you completely. We but there are other things. Involved. There are yes. other things. I'm sure you may be able to shoulder, shoulder yourself. I'm just, you know. It, it, well, I've been doing as much as I can, especially the, I small, agree. the, the, I agree. the town hall has been right. my. Yeah. We call it pet project, if you want to say that. But uh, I can say that that you know I've worked with a number of select boards now, and I know today's. Selectman, selectman, selectman's job is not the same job it was oh, no. 20 years ago. Right. That job 20 years ago, you show up every other Tuesday and you know, commit for a while, no. sign a few things, yeah. go home, you're done. That's not the way it is anymore. No. And, and you know, I don't know how we adjust to it, either we hire more people or more people shoulder the load. I, I mean, that's, you know, it's just the um, way it is. And, and, and some of it's going to depend on who has time to do it. Of the three of us, who's got time? I mean, who's retired and who's working full time? I mean, a full time person. Exactly. Who right. comes home at night has got Shot. family time to worry about. Mm -hmm. A retiree can do it any time during the day, I guess. So let's get back to what we're okay. talking about. Thank you. Know? Thank you. All right, so. You know, Thanks for bringing me back. It, it's going to. It's going to cost a little more money in the lead. If it, we'll just take it out of the reserve fund. Is that what I you mean, want to do? The bottom, the bottom line is we need to replace Mary Ellen. How right. easy do you think it'll be? How what? How easy do you think it will be to, re to, to replace her? To get somebody. So the advertisements out there, I have a tremendous amount of resumes. Oh, okay. So how easy it will be to, to replace. So qualified? Oh, okay, that's better. Are we talking qualified yeah. people? Yeah. <laughs> I think we have a handful. Qualified resumes we've received. Yeah, we've had three or four. That's you know. Um, I'm not putting any more work on you, but go ahead and do it. And if we got to take money out of the reserve fund to make it work, let's make it work. Let's get it done, right? And move forward. Yeah, because the process for next year will see. Your kind of time is going up a lot of time too. So. <laughs> and budget season. And this budget season we replaced Mary Ellen at the night meeting, so she'll be the yeah. she'll be the the secretary for you guys. She'll be the secretary. For so what's the source, Mary Ellen? Two She's gonna do the assistant treasurer collector stuff. She does payroll. She does. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and I guess my stuff. my question is, I mean, okay, we let people like say what they want to do and what they don't want to do. Are we are we better? No, off? she's resigning as yes, assistant. Yes, right. And that's that's fine. But are we better off getting somebody? Is it, are we one more person. attractive to get one person? In here, I know if I'm looking for a job, I'm not looking for a 24-hour-a-week job. I'm looking for a 40-hour-a-week job. Are we going? To, are we going to be getting, you know, more qualified candidates to t to work 40 hours a week yeah. than we are having somebody at 24 hours and somebody to start maybe 30 down 15? The road. I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. But I mean, we went through this before with, you know, the, the town clerk thing and, and all that and how much work there is and. I, I just think splitting work up amongst multiple people for lesser hours isn't always, especially when they're falling under uh, benefited positions. Well, um, just looking at the comp time list and the number of hours that Mary Allen has 
accrued. It looks like we need more than one person. But she's it's, over It's incredible. There, wait a minute. There's an explanation for that. Okay. She accrued almost all of those hours between Mark and Brian. Yeah. Right. Mark left or was leaving. Mm -hmm. We had not hired Brian yet. Okay. She sure. took on 100% of those duties. What, you know, we're jumping ahead because yeah. we're going to talk about this later, but we'll talk about it right now. The problem occurs when we're going to use Mary Ellen for an example. When she started doing the job of administrative assistant, she should have been getting paid for the hours she worked out of the administrative you're not the administrator's account. She was not. She was a, because either our system isn't set up that way or whatever. She just kept racking up more comp time. She's now spending it down, getting rid of it. You know, in the back of my mind, I had a number that this number was going to be like twenty thousand dollars. All this comp time. It's down to eighty-one seventy-seven. It's probably a little less than that now because it's been a month since the last number. But the way the personnel committee left it was, if this ever happens again, this kind of a scenario, it has to be, it's gonna be addressed like in the first two weeks that it happens, the first pay period that it happens, it needs to be addressed how we are going to pay this person. We are not gonna let somebody just keep accruing Comp time. They've got to be paid. Mm -hmm. The fact that it's eighty-one seventy-seven, that's easy enough to swallow. I mean, that, that out of all these different yeah, people, yeah. there's money in their budgets to yeah. pay them. Yeah. Right. Why do we call it comp time? Because instead of getting paid, you took overtime. Instead, time, overtime. instead of getting paid overtime at time and a half, yeah. you took it. You get time and a half off. But she couldn't take the time because there was so much work to do. Right. Well, like in Keith's case, Keith doesn't want to take. He wants the comp time. He does. We make sure. Right. Uh, right. You know, Wayne Hukoski right now is is working more than his allotted hours. He has to run water for water tests. They need to. They need to reevaluate. They need to, they need to re reevaluate that, that position. Position. Because that's been going up. Right. Is that um, something that we just, it's in our handbook or something that you get one and a half times the hours that you it, work? It is your option, it is an option. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, fair, it's a fair labor standard. I, I did, that's so why I just I'm asking a question. I didn't. Uh, yeah. It's fair, it's fair, it's fair labor standards. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right, because we we hash that around too. That I mean, it, do, do we take that option away? From people, if you're a new hire, we say if you work more than 40 hours a week, you're going to get paid time and a half. Well, we have to identify who who is um, benefiting. Uh, no, 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 not benefiting. But you you have s salaried positions, supervisory positions, who basically are salary, who you know you get exempt and you get not exempt. Right. So right. comp time. So so uh, a supervisor usually is where you get the comp time. Everybody else is just overtime. That's the, so, so that's why I think it's right there. That's the biggest one. That's what I think. So, so okay. So I would say that's that's comp time. I would say everybody else that's working. You know, I mean, I don't know if Don falls into that. I don't know. No, but, I don't. You know, I don't know if Wayne falls into that or not. But you uh, know, he's in charge. But but I would personally say that that is comp time. That is, you get your your time for the time worked. You get that time off. Everybody else should be overtime. But they should be paying. Who's Tyler? He's the oh, highway one. Works on the highway. Okay, good. That's a low man on. Okay, right so, now. so why does he have? He why does, why does a guy like that not just get paid overtime? Because he chooses his choice. That's, That's his ridiculous. choice. We need people here. We hire them to work. Yeah, but fair labor standards. Isn't that fair labor standard? Mm -hmm. But they get a choice. Are you kidding me? No, it's a law. Is that? I mean, my guys. I I will not give them cop time. Um, well, you're a private institution. That's 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 the difference. So if somebody so if somebody's working in a factory down the road and they 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 work twenty hours of overtime, then they have a choice whether they get paid or whether they have the time off. 
if, they, if, that, if that organization follows the Fair Labor Standards Act, yes. If they don't follow it, then... Well, what do you mean follow it? Is it a law or isn't it a law? Yeah, it's a law. So they're breaking the law. Yeah. Yeah. I think that yeah. I, I, our, our lawyer is reading it right I will, now. I will totally disagree with that. That has never been anything that I have ever. I've worked plenty of places. And I've, worked pri I've, I've worked for private companies, private schools. I've, I've worked for uh, companies that have traded on Wall Street. I mean, I've worked for them all, and that has never been. The only discretionary thing was who's exempt and who's not exempt. Yep. Yeah. That has never been somebody has a choice whether they get paid or not. We need somebody here. If we if we have them working extra hours, it's because I needed to be here. You're paying for the That's hours. That's the difference work. between for profit and not for profit. <laughs> that shit. Yeah. And I've worked for them both. Mm -hmm. I've worked for them both, and I've never seen such a thing. Mm -hmm. I I think it's ridiculous. I agree, but it's what we have. Like I said, with Keith, I understand it. He's a yeah. supervisor. He's in charge. He's, yeah. he's 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 not exempt from overtime. Wayne is exempt, or is he exempt from overtime? Whatever, however, yeah, how it yeah, works. works. Well, you know, Wayne is supposed to work twenty-five or thirty hours a week, and he's been steadily working more, but through no fault of his own. It's not like he can't get the job done in a timely fashion. Okay, um, let's uh, let's proceed on from uh, from this. Uh, is that wrapped up? Are we are we are we good on Capital that? Capital planning uh, process. And anything else before we leave? No, good. Let's go. Um, we don't want to talk about capital planning. Well, we don't. There's much there to say. Yet. Okay. There's no, uh, You're like the school committee. You don't have any information <laughs> for us. No, no. no. It, it's more about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's more about what Brian wants to buy. I mean, it's more about the process. Oh. Um, we're, we're in the process of trying to have them submit sooner, right? With yeah. Partners. Well, that, that's one of the things we need. We need. We need, we, we need to. We need to do it sooner and more comprehensively, in my opinion. Um, we need to get a detailed five-year, ten-year plan of, of needs of needs of, of what's going to come up and what we can plan for, and that way we don't have these. Mm. Highs and lows of uh, of our capital budget of overspending on capital items. Mm. Um, okay, but in terms of specifics, that uh, there's not really much. I just wanted to throw that out there that it, that it really should be starting earlier. Um, yeah, you agree with that, Dan? Or you're the yeah, I I think we could extend it out further and have them propose more, but some departments are already doing that. Yeah, I mean we're doing that with highway. Yeah, yeah we're highway. doing that with. With uh, police, yeah, we're, we're doing it with any any uh, mechanical items like that. Yeah. Okay. The other things that have come up that we weren't quite aware of are some things like highway garage electrical. Yeah. Right? Turn off gear like for the fire department. The turn off gear. That was another boo boo that yeah. just slipped by the crack. Yeah. But a lot of the departments for the major items are forecasting ahead, okay. and we do that on a regular basis so mm -hmm. you know it's there, there's some items which can be made better but others are already in place yeah, yeah. One, one of the items I'd, I'd like to be focused on is building components as well when we're going to need a new roof when you're going to need a new boiler when the lifespan of certain mechanical equipment we should be able to project that out yeah true um, so that's a place I'd like to improve on we'll just okay. jump in here. Fred I think this was a lot of what you wanted to talk about well right so uh, yeah, I propose that, that we, I guess, improve on the process and get more of these building managers involved and and get them as a committee working together to address the capital improvements or building maintenance, whatever you want to call it, items. I don't see that happening today. It's Keith comes in, Wayne comes in, or whoever comes in, and they present something, but. It's it's emergency, one time deal. We got to do it now because yeah. things are falling apart. We need a plan ahead, and you need to be aware of what the other guy next to you is planning as well. So it comes together in one budget. We don't all get hit with five major items one year. We could be able to spread them out. We don't have a process that looks at that, that yeah. assesses what is the current need yeah, for the that. The number is there that is and spread out with the. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't see that happening. Right, right now, I can, I can see every building that the town owns, there is a need for, if you want to call it maintenance or capital improvements. 
There is a need for that. I can tell you examples of every building we have in town. But yet, last year, capital improvement program, not one of them items came up as a budget item, came up for the budget. Some were discussed later on during our discussions, but not one came up. So what's happening? We're not doing building maintenance, building improvements in town. We need to be focusing, looking at that, develop a schedule. I'm not saying we, we need to do everything at once, but develop a schedule, lay it out, assess what we have, and develop a schedule to keep maintaining these buildings. You know yourselves, look at the buildings we have in town. Are they all being maintained properly? Mm -hmm. Whose responsibility should it be? Department well, it should, it should be department heads. That's but we're not, but they don't come together as a committee. Yeah. Well, you've got to change that. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what I, I think needs department. to be done. That's, I'll say that's my proposal. I shared some with Ryan, but it hasn't come to the select board yet. I guess the select board is going to need to discuss this, but, but that is, is what I think needs to be done to have a better process. And in how that building, fits in and how that fits into the finance for your committee. Well, I mean, you would think of, I mean, the select board should be extremely interested in what's right. going on with the buildings because right. they're at the top, they're the top the of the food chain for, the responsible for right. the cap capital items that we own. But I don't see these projects coming forward every year, the yeah. last two years at least. I haven't seen them. And I know there's needs out there, but not, nothing's being done. How do you know if there's needs out there? Just looking at the building. Okay, so are you going people. in there? Are you taking a look at them? Are you, or are you going to trust the people that are in the buildings to manage the buildings to see that? So I'm going to I'm going to say that I would ask those people what you need. I wouldn't go micromanaging what their needs are. You want to say something? Give me a chance to say this, okay? Don't go micromanaging these people who are in charge of these buildings. If they're not the right people, then we got to get different people in there. But if you feel that they're not doing the job taking care of these, that's a whole different story. I don't think the select board meeting coming, the selectman coming in here saying that this stuff has to be done to these buildings is giving the proper uh, credence to the people who are actually running these buildings. And that is that's a problem. And, and well, you're micromanaging these no, people, I'm and you're, you're not giving them the authority to come forward. You're saying that they're not doing their job. We will. If, if I, what I propose is that we give them the authority to come forward to present something to us. They're not doing that today. Why? I don't know why. Exactly. So I don't think it's right for you to come forward saying that there is stuff that needs to be done to these buildings it's when just because you're walking around them. Okay. Go to the people who are in these buildings, who are running these buildings, and talk to them. I have, we've done that. I, I've done that, other members of the board have done that as well, but you know, we don't see things coming forward to-, to So that's a problem. That. That's a personal that's a, that's problem. That's a communication problem. Well, yeah, it's a communication problem. You know, there's, you know, there's no mechanism, it could be, but that, that, and, and Fred, I, I, I don't, you can put it in place. And I, I don't think I agree with you though that there should be a meeting of the department heads, because they don't have, the authority. It's really our job for them to come to us and for us to set the priorities on which of the departments. That's the that's capital, that's capital, capital planning. Plan. Exactly. That's, that's, that's capital planning. But it's, I don't think a, a I agree. committee I, of department heads that's what I've been has, to has the authority. They have not right. brought this information forward. forward to us. They right. right. have not brought this information forward to us. They have not brought this information forward to us. And until they do, you're not going to see it on a report. The right. only ones you do see on the report are the ones that are under control now, which okay. are your trucks, the ambulance, they're not ambulance anymore, but cruisers, cruisers. lawnmowers, right. that kind of thing. Yeah. That is there. That yeah. is there on a five to ten year period. Right. No, I'm, 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 I'm just taking issue with, with Fred. He's talking about proposal, something different. Proposal of setting up a, 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 a committee like that. But this should be vertical. They should be going up with their suggestions, oh, exactly. not across to their other department. But, but we all have to. We we all have to agree that all of these people report to to those guys. Yeah. Right. Those guys are their supervisors. Right. So they, 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 they report to the select board. But these things should be going to the capital improvements. Correct. That's where they these. They have to reports or suggestions or right. they've requests got to, should be going. They've got to get these people to right. send that to us. That's right. what I'm saying. Right. 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 And I think that's probably it's Fred's point. Is, right. is missing is that process to send them. them right. But, but and, and what I, but what I was, my the point of what I was saying was I don't think we need to form another across department committee. I don't think that that solves anything. No. Just the information well, has to get to 
to the people to give that information to the capital improvements. However, you with, without that. setting up some new structure. Yeah. How yeah. you do that, I, I guess, is, is open for discussion. But I'm not pr proposing to either the select board or micromanage any of this. It's not going to come to that. It has to come from the people that that are owners or, or used live in this building to. to come forward with projects or improvements that they want, or if you want to call it maintenance, whatever, to maintain their building. Select board is not going to go around <clears throat> and identify things that need to be done. I just said that because I know my own experience, there's things that need to be done. I'm not going around and telling people, go well, I know you're not telling people, you're making I'm not going to tell you're people bring, You're bringing them to us. Now, as I'm saying is, we've looked at the library, we've made improvements to the library, We've done, you know, I don't think it's a shortage of projects to be, to oh, be yeah. done. We did pave, we did pave, and we, yeah. we, we, fixed, we fixed up the, uh, the recycling thing. I mean, there, there's all these things are there. And, and I think if you, you know, I think it's a conversation that maybe you have with these people, but I, I agree with Fred that I don't think we need to set up a whole nother, I mean, that's what, I think the capital planning. May I say something? Yeah. yeah. Every year, he sends out a letter to all department heads with a deadline and a request for any of their capital improvements. Is that correct? For the in one that letter, idea, yeah. Yeah. In that letter, all you have to do this year is extend that and explain to them that you want numbers or dates for building type maintenance, which we just went through with the schools. They haven't been doing it with us. They've been taking it out of some other money and building around. And we're picking on them. We're doing the same thing in town. Yeah. With our own building. Oh yeah. So you know, you know what I'm saying? We gotta be careful who we pick on here. That letter should specify what the capital planning committee needs, it needs for to be a ten year detailed. period. Yeah, it needs to be. If we do that, Fred, detailed. I think that's gonna take care of the problem. Well, that may may well be. That's what I'm advocating that we do, that we need to, we need to do something like that. There is a method, a means in place, is what I'm driving. Okay, to well, do that already. Maybe we need to the, reinforce. There, there may that. also need to be some something in there that if they don't get something in, it they, may not be considered. They know that. They know that, and we know that yeah. on the finance board because yeah. if it doesn't come to us in time, we don't consider it we go off for another year. Well, yeah, but we, yeah. we would want to know about it before. That March, you know, we we would like to keep, if they know something's going to come up now, we would you know, the capital yeah. improvements they should know about it now, not find out about it in March. Yeah. With so, cool. suddenly, oh late. by the way, here's twenty five thousand dollars we need. Oh, to fix for us, we automatically, if it comes in late, after we've had our yeah. meeting and forwarded the information to yeah. the finance committee, it is automatically de deferred. Yeah, unless it's a safety. Right. Yeah. Other than that, it's automatically the first. So here's where it kind of sits. There is a me mechanism. Maybe it needs to be better communicated. Well, right. Maybe the select board needs to think about how you communicate that to the individuals who are the department heads. Right. And so that's in your court now. Uh, that's not, yeah, that's not something that. we're going to do. That's true. And, and part and, of that includes him. Yeah, the select board for doing sure. some of their buildings yeah. and stuff, that, which are the town buildings, right? right? Such right. as this building, right? And I think that well, that would be your <laughs> right. But it's, it, it's all very important right. because we don't want to see. You know, if, if you yeah. don't fix something now, you're fixing two things downstream. Right. So anyway, it's quarter quarter of eight. Yeah. Do we have any other things? So we I make a motion. We hold on, hold on, no. Brian. Uh, is there anything else? I need some more comment time. Yeah. More <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to approve that right now. Uh, to want to do? We're going to put a limit on yours. I think we already did. Right. Let's reduce some of our meetings, budget meetings. That'd be yeah. good. Yeah. No, we're all set. All set. Yes. Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. See you later. Thanks. Uh,